Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tiny Blue Games. My name, of course, is Seesaw Chris, and today we're playing Guild Wars 2. So today we're going to have a quick conversation about one of my favorite classes, or professions, I guess, to play in the game for PvP right now. Uh, as you know, it's obviously ranked Season 5 right now, which has been, you know, sort of mixed feelings. I think on the whole, it's been a lot more positive than other seasons have been, and either way, we can all say that the rewards in terms of money and Ascended Gear has been a lot nicer than some of the other seasons. So the build in question is my little tiny Berserker Warrior that you've uh, seen me on a few times throughout uh, my videos. And we're going to talk about uh, sort of a nice build that I have. He's really a brawler kind of class. Um, he shines well in the middle, uh, dealing great AoE damage. Being able to heal himself is an exceptionally, you know, decent amount. You see in the uh, front screenshot there that I have um, almost 300,000 healing, and that's uh, self-healing, which is fairly impressive, um, allowing me to stay alive in the middle a lot longer than some other players. So we're going to do a quick overview of the build, and then we're going to look at my, you know, damaging that I can do, and my burst, as well as some of the defensive abilities I have. So we'll take a quick run through. Uh, why don't we start with the traits, since they're here. Uh, we run Strength, Defense, and Berserker. For strength, we go middle, top, middle. Uh, we take this mostly for any kind of interrupts we do, uh, which is a lot because we're actually running mace shield as our off-time weapons. Uh, for defense, we go top, uh, top, and then the uh, bottom one. And this is our, this is, as it would have you believe, is our defense line, and it does provide us with a lot of defense. Um, our shield reflects, which is very important against a lot of uh, projectile based classes such as rangers and some of these new pistol pistol thieves that I've been seeing running around. Uh, but our biggest defense is actually the rousing resilience. Uh, we'll get into this more when I demonstrate it but this is this allows you to stay alive a lot during a fight. Um, and then we also have gain health when you have adrenaline spent. So there's a lot of ways that we're healing and this is where all that healing is coming from is this in this line right here. And then we have berserker because you just got to bring the Berserker. Uh, you got to bring whatever the new Heart of Thorns thing is, obviously, right? No. But this one does give us a lot of damaging ability. Um, we use, um, obviously, a lot of fire. A fire is our primary damaging thing. I'm going to get into that in a second. Uh, but King of Fires really does a lot. And then we also you do use the Torch. So this is quite a handy um, little addition to our condition damage. So looking at our loadout, we run Sword Torch. Mace Shield. This is a slight variation over the Longbow uh, Burn Warriors that you've been seeing. Um, what I find it to be is it allows you to be a little bit more precise with where all your damage is going. This is particularly good for when you're um, sort of starting mid-fights and there's a targeted Ellie or Necro and you want to burn them down. This set really allows you to apply a lot of single target damage, which is quite impressive. Uh, on it we have the Agony sigil and the smoldering just to increase our condition duration uh, because we're going to be in the mid fight for a while so if we can keep our conditions just constantly ticking it really does wear people down and then over here we have bursting and stun duration in the shield um, these could be swapped for anything you want any any of this could be swapped for whatever you want this is just what i find works quite well for me uh, and, and that goes for the rune as well i'm running balthazar right now just as burning is by far our most damaging um, condition. Uh, in the past, I've run like Nightmare and some other ones that give more all around condition duration and condition damage. Uh, that It's been proven quite well as well. You get a lot more bleed and confusion damage that way, but I find when I'm able to just really precisely use my fire, I'm able to actually take people down a lot better. And then finally, we're running the carry on amulet. Um, this gives us the most amount of condition damage, a large amount of vitality and power. Uh, this is, once again, something that can be swapped around, but I find it to be the most useful because we've actually um, pretty much maxed burn duration, and then with the uh, incredible condition damage, that makes it hit like a truck. Um, in addition to that, vitality is obviously great for staying up on a warrior. As we have a lot of passive heals, it's very important that our health pool is quite large to be able to receive those heals. And then power is also quite good because on your sword, you have final thrust, which does do a fair bit of damage and your mace actually will do a fair bit if you're just stuck in your mace 
and don't have any of your uh, condition stuff off cooldown. So that is what we're running with. Um, let's talk about bursting at the start of fights. As a warrior, unless you do not have a mesmer or a thief, you'll often end, your, end up finding yourself in the mid-fight. I mean, this is where I find myself for most gold matches. If you have, you know, a higher placed team or something like that, you might have more strategic things, but generally one person goes to the side for us and four people go to the middle, and you're going to hopefully target someone. Now, who do we excel against? And that's a very important thing to know when you go into a fight. The target we can take down the quickest is a Necromancer. And that works out really well because Necromancers tend to be targeted often. We have a lot of utility against Necromancers, mostly in the fact that we can uh, go immune to conditions. I guess I should mention what my uh, utility layout is in a second here. But we'll just continue on the thought tangent I'm on right now. We can go immune to conditions against Necromancers, which allows us to stomp them without being feared. That's a very important thing to understand, and it's very key to try and, you know, save one of your resistance buffs for when you're going to stomp the Necromancer. Uh, particularly the one that's an instant cast is a very good choice. Now, how do we take down a target at the start? We go and burn them up, and then we stun lock them after we've uh, uh, done all of our burns. So we're going to use all of our torch skills and set fire to them, and then we're going to use our headbutt and switch to mace and shield and just keep them stunned. Now I'm going to do a, a small demonstration on this large target here, hopefully before anyone else attacks it. This guy is like looking suspiciously like he wants to, but we'll make our move. So I'll just show you my rotation and then we'll talk about what I did and why. All right, so that was a large amount of burst. Um, we could have done continued the rotation, in fact. I think you need a little bit more damage than that to kill the beasts. But it got the point across of what we were trying to do. So I'll just swap back to my torch here. The very first thing we do when we go into combat is we put down our fire, and then we charge. And what this does is it not only leaps us towards our target, but gives us a fire aura. Now, if we look at our traits again... King of Flames, increase the duration of your burning, which is great. Uh, gain Fire Aura when you critically hit enemy. And then Berserker will detonate Fire Auras. So the more Fire Auras we have going into an AoE fight, the more damage we're going to be blasting out. Because detonates Fire Aura, damaging and burning nearby foes. So that's a lot of damage uh, that's just going to be coming out of our Auras. So you see that right away. The next thing we do is once we have them burning slightly, I do tend to use my headbutt right away as it will fill up the adrenaline bar to the point where we can use Berserker. Now Berserker will detonate our aura and will allow us to use our most powerful single target damaging skill, which is Flaming Fury. Now this will launch a bunch of fireballs at your target that will, if they hit the target, do devastating damage. When you enter the fight, you might be able to get up to 16 to 20 stacks of burning right away. This is amount of damage that a burn guardian will be able to do, um, but you're actually able to not only do that burst, but then also continue applying burns with other skills. This allows you to successfully cleave down any targets around you, because a lot of our targets are also, or a lot of our attacks are also multi uh, hitting attacks. For instance, the Flames of War will be damaging anyone in, around us. We have Blaze Breaker, which will damage everyone in a straight line in front of us. And then the actual Flaming, bl uh, flaming Flurry will hit anyone behind the actual target we're hitting as well. I'll demonstrate this now quickly, hopefully with a few targets that are close together, if I can find one. Let's, uh, let's do this one here. All right, there you go. You can see it hitting through the two targets and we're burning the target behind it for three Ks as well as devastating the initial target. This does a lot of damage if you have a good angle on the enemy team. Another target that's very important to consider attacking is a Elementalist. Much like the Necromancers, they're often targeted from the start 
and we're quite successful at killing them. The important thing to understand is that they do have a lot of condition cleanse, and if they use it properly, they'll be able to negate our burst damage. What you should do at first is apply your conditions slowly to make uh, it feel like you've applied your condition damage and your burst is gone, but then use your actual burst. The way you can do this is using your smaller skills, such as your number four on your torch, as well as your auto attacks on your sword, and despite doing little damage, they will still see burns and bleed ticks, and they might push their Condi Cleanse. Once they've used it once, you unleash your full burn. At this point, they'll panic and start chunking down fast. It's great to use your headbutt to interrupt their healing skills and keep them locked in place while your, your uh, allies can damage them down, and then switch to Mace and Shield, where you can use Skull Crack, or Skull Grinder, both of which are devastating, Shield Bash, as well as the uh, silence you have on your, uh, your mace. All this together allows you to destroy an enemy healer before they're actually able to heal. If you use all of your interrupts successfully in order, you can actually lock down certain classes before they're able to do anything and will die just while stunned. You can do this to thieves, or any kind of squishy damage dealer such as a Power Ranger if you're so lucky to go against one. I'm now going to move over to the uh, bosses over here just so we can have a little bit of damage against this and sort of show you what some of our heals can do. Let me just fly down over here. Actually, why don't we uh, we'll kill a boss too just to show you... Because I, I always like to play a class that I know I can kill a boss on if I get this map. So I'll just show you how successfully this can go. So we do the same intro. Headbutt. Light them up. And then he's just going to burn out. We can reapply it. See how fast we can reapply Oh, they got me down. But look, look, how, look how tanky we are. And there you go. That's done. That was without even switching to stun him or anything like that, which we could do. You don't really want to waste your stuns if you don't have to. I tend to save them in case someone, like a thief or someone, pops up and tries to kill it. Then you can try and stun it while the boss, uh, stun the thief, that is, while the boss burns uh, to the ground. But, you know, it's your choice. So we're going to talk about some of our heals now. We've already talked about a lot of our healing power. I'll talk about our lo loadout on the side here a bit more, too. We have the healing signet, which will passively heal us, but can also give us resistance to condition damage. Um, we have Berserker Stance, which is really taken solely for its quick resistance to condition damage in case you have a Burn Guardian on you or a Necromancer. Once again, for stomping Necromancers, this is great to negate their fear. We take Endure Pain here. This is an optional one. Um, I find that I also have a lot of blocks and stuff with my shield, so it's maybe not necessary. And you could put something more damaging here if you wanted a bit more offensive ability, but it's up to you. And then we take Outrage, which is one of the best healing skills we have, as it's actually a stun break on a 10 second cooldown. And it has the added benefit of giving us a ton of adrenaline, as well as burning all targets around us. Finally, the ultimate that I find to be the most useful is Headbutt. It applies burning, it gains us a lot of adrenaline, and it's, it's just overall a fun skill to use. It also breaks stun, so it can heal you. So I'm just going to demonstrate our healing by going up into this boss area. I'm not going to be attacking or anything. I'm just going to show you what we can do. We get stunned. We get stunned again. We break it. We've got toughness, and we got healing. We're going to switch to our... Oh, we just endure pain for a bit. There you go. Enduring pain. Going to switch to shield for a bit. Blocking. Using mace 2 to block even more. We just uh, used another stun break. Just going to walk around. We've got our headbutt back up now. So we can just keep walking around like this. Stun break again. Stun break again deflecting. Now you can see that the adds are actually dying just from the burns we've had from uh, using our stun breaks. We're still very comfortable at this point, 
it looks like we're actually quite low, but we really are not at all in any kind of concern at this moment. Um, we're waiting for another uh, interrupt or stun or something like that to, there you go, just heal themselves again. Gonna do some reflecting now. Let's stun him a bit. Can put that on. And yeah, like, oh, there you go. Sorry, I clicked that one. Uh, let's just, I was walking away. But yeah, you can see that we have an incredible amount of survivability because if we had actually just gone in and killed the boss right away while we were surviving, we would have been done a long time ago. We already killed all of his adge just with our passive burning. And I think that's really the key to being our middle brawler is that you do have a large amount of focus for single target damage, but you have passive burning that allows you to really get high game damage. Like you see our damage um, on this screenshot here, we are able to get almost 800,000 damage, well 700 something thousand damage, just by being able to passively burn everyone around us while staying alive. And that, that's really where this build shines. So I think that's all I want to share for this video. Let me know if you've been playing this profession in this way, or if you've been playing something else you've really enjoyed and want to share it with the comment section. Uh, until then, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.